Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco Dish Out on Movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. And it's just Marco here once again, <laughs> and I am here to review You Are Not My Mother! <laughs> that is the title of this movie. It is the newest folk horror movie, and I call it folk horror, at least to my understanding, it's where... It's it's not really like full on horror. It's kind of like thirty percent of the way there, and a lot of mythology and fairy tale stuff is used in order to uh, tell like a a pretty simple story like Hereditary, The Witch, stuff like that. Because movies like those, they got a lot of pushback when they came out. People said that's not horror. That's not horror. And so now they have this term, folk horror. And honestly, I don't mind folk horror. I mean, I, I kind of liked The Witch. I thought it was pretty good. I wouldn't really want to watch it again. Or maybe like once in the future, but not really at all, actually. It's just not very rewatchable. And then Hereditary, I thought that was kind of boring, it had a couple of good things in it, but it was pretty boring. And this movie, <laughs> I was also excited because it's an Irish movie, and I love Irish accents. I love them to death. It's such a, it, it's like a, it's like a bonus watching Irish movies because I get to hear these uh, accents. I love Irish accents. They're probably my favorite accent out of all of them, like probably Irish and then Australian. And then after that, I don't know. But anyways, this movie, You Are Not My Mother, it is a very simple story about a girl and her mom, and she's having problems in school because of bullies, and her mom at one point disappears. It's near Halloween, and shit's gonna happen. That's that's the non-spoiler <laughs> plot line that I could say. And first off, I think that it was it was okay. It was okay. You know, it wasn't bad. It wasn't good. It was just okay. Or, or I mean not good, but like great, you know. It was just okay. And I think that that's good actually. That's a win because a lot of movies nowadays I, I'm, they really piss me off. They really upset me, and they really, I just call them trash. I just call them all trash. It's hard to rate, rank them because they're all just so bad. So for this movie to at least be okay, I see that as a very positive thing because I think the director and writer, she can go a lot of places from here. And that's that's another thing that surprised me was that this movie... To, to me, I, I thought, like, the person who made this, this has to have been their, like, what, third or fourth movie? No, this was her first movie. She made a couple of short movies before this, but I, actually, I thought, like, wow, that's actually really impressive. This movie didn't feel like a first movie at all, uh, so I, I like that. Uh, it was just, it, it definitely was a little boring, because it it was an hour and 33 minutes, it was a short movie, but the substance really wasn't there to justify making an hour and 30 minute long movie, in my opinion. Like, I think, honestly, this could have been a bit better if it was like a Twilight Zone episode, or if it was maybe like a Goosebumps, like an Irish Goosebumps a uh, two-parter because that's what this really that's what it reminded me of it reminded me a lot of R.L. Stein's short goosebump stories where he has the uh, stories that'll give you goosebumps whatever those books are called where they're like little short stories and there's nothing wrong with that like it it's just very very simple and and a lot of people are going to be able to predict what happens like, even with my little 
explanation. Some people are probably going to be like, oh, I know what happens. Like, so that's something. I just, I think that the movie, it, it has its good points, it has its bad points. Uh, but it's really not bad. Like, it's really not that bad. It just, for every good thing, there's a negative thing. But I will say that I liked all the actors. I, I loved the main actress uh, who played Cher. Uh, she was pretty cool. And the, the person who I really loved, though, out of the whole cast, I really loved her friend. She has this friend in the movie who kind of hangs out with the bullies, and she's a really nice friend, and she's, uh, she's pretty cool, actually. And her grandmother... Uh, Cher's grandmother, the main girl, her grandmother, she looks like Kathleen Kennedy. And so if you guys want to see something, like, scary, like, it's pretty scary. Like, I'm not saying if she's a bad guy or not. I'm just saying, like, just the fact that, like, they have someone who looks like Kathleen Kennedy, that's pretty scary. You know, she destroyed Star Wars, and she destroys everything she touches, basically, and so, it, it was actually a really good chess move to, like, have someone who looks like Kathleen Kennedy in this movie, in a horror movie. Like, wow, uh, that was that was creepy. And there were some creepy moments in this movie, actually. Uh, not really any horror moments, like, any, like, there weren't really very many gripping, like, just standout horror moments, like in The Shining, where... You know, you have that whole scene where he goes into that room 237 and then uh, you have the naked witch woman and, and oh, gross, that was so creepy. And that scared the living shit out of me as a kid. Uh, this movie didn't really have anything like that. It had a couple of moments, but they didn't really come close to something like that. And I think that that was a big downfall of this movie was that they had good concepts they had good story points, but they didn't really flesh them out. They kept it very simple and short and sweet. And I think in this case, it actually worked against the movie because as someone who's seen a lot of horror movies, I wanted to see more horror. You know, I wanted to see more stuff go on. I just didn't want to, like, see this very, very simple... It was almost like... If you go to art class and the first lesson, they say, okay, we want you to fill in all the different shapes with one color. And you don't have to shade it or anything. You just fill it in completely with one color. That's what this movie was like. It really didn't do anything that different that you could say, yeah, this was like really, really something. But I still kind of enjoyed it. I mean... I am thankful to have seen it because I can't wait to see the next movie. Excuse me, sorry. I can't wait to see the next movie that the director makes. I can't remember her name. I can't really remember any of their names because I wanted to to get this review out there uh, ASAP. And anything, in, in terms of uh, uh, music, there was some good music actually. The music was kind of scarier than the movie's contents like they had some really creepy music at some points like I'm not going to uh, replicate it because I'm going to sound stupid uh, there's kind of like this slow burn type of music at some points that I really liked and it really uh it added it added like this flavor to the movie like a you know when you have a chicken breast and you put salt and pepper and then you put cayenne pepper on top of that, and it's like, yeah, now we're adding some flavors. <laughs> so, uh, any, uh, I'm just trying to think of anything else I have to say. Uh, I would say if you guys want to see a movie that sort of does this, but does this story better, is I would recommend watching... Well, okay, that's going to be a spoiler, actually. That would kind of spoil how the movie goes. Okay. In terms of a rating, I would say that this movie is... It is like when you go to the grocery store and you get 
a glazed donut from Krispy Kreme. You get like just one glazed donut and you eat that. It's very simple. It's very, very just playing it safe. Not really doing anything to stand out. I will say I love the poster. I thought the poster is what attracted me to the movie. Like I had my fair picks today. Like I had a list of picks that I could have I could have chosen to review any of them and I chose this movie because I really liked the poster. It was a very cool, creepy poster and and so yeah, I got to say good poster. I also really like the Halloween elements. I like some of the set design and things. Like, I remember the classroom for some reason the most, because in her classroom, there was, like, this really creepy, like, skull mask or something on the wall, and I thought, like, that stuff, those kind of little touches were, like, my favorite part of the movie, because it really showed some attention to detail. Uh, the one thing, though, the one big criticism that I have is the lighting and the look of the movie. Because there are some moments in this movie where the lighting and the look works. Because this movie, it looks like a, a sacked Snyder movie. In terms of, they, you know, you got another emo editor who is on the verge of killing themselves. And they sucked out all the color from the movie. And so the movie, was, uh, it looked like a Zack Snyder movie. It had this very desaturated, ugly, dark, dull look. And it worked in some parts of the movie, but then other parts it really did not work. And I would just say in general, keep the color in movies because like you don't need to suck out the color to make it scary. Like you don't need to make it almost black and white just to make the movie creepier or like grittier because that's basically why they do it in a lot of these horror movies especially is because they think that that makes everything scarier automatically because wow it, it just oh everything is so dark and so so dark you, you know what I mean and that was a problem, was that there were a lot of scenes near the end where you really had trouble seeing what was going on. I mean, I would say that, you know, look at the indie movie that came out this year, Entropy, that I reviewed in uh, February or January. That movie had great lighting, and there were these moments where it could have been very hard to see what was going on but they had this great colorful lighting that really it showed you. And it was really nice because it, it helped the movie. It boosted the movie of what otherwise would have been like just a, a dark mess. You know, it had this great lighting. But in this movie, particularly towards the end, there are these scenes where, you know, these big things are happening and I could barely tell what was going on. I had to... You know, I had to like squint my eyes and it, it was, it was tough and it's too bad because it was pretty good at the end. It was, it was okay. It, it just had that same level of okay, the whole movie. And so that Krispy Kreme donut, if you just, if you're in the mood for a simple Krispy Kreme glazed donut, then watch this movie. That's my... That's my uh, summation of things. In terms of spoilers, <laughs> this movie is all about changelings. And I guess she was uh, the main girl, Cher, she was switched as a baby. And so uh, they brought her back somehow and then they tested her to see if she was still a changeling. And so that's why she has this burn mark on her face. But it's really weird because you'd think that they would just tell her about these changelings. Like, for some reason, they're keeping it secret the whole movie so that they can have, like, the typical big reveal scene near the end. And it's funny because the, the main girl, she's also pretty dumb at some points. Like, she'll just believe nothing because it's her mother. It's her mother. And so near the end she kind of gets pretty stupid until she's 
like straight up confronted with the truth literally and physically. Uh, I don't know. It's just the whole movie was just her going to school and she had these bullies and I got to admit like that was pretty good because the bullies, they were pretty mean. They were pretty evil. And so I don't know, like maybe if did more with that, that would have been scarier. Uh, and then she goes home and her mother has come back from her disappearance and she just kind of acts creepy the whole movie. And then at the end, she goes full on changeling and Cher has to burn her alive in order to get her real mom back. And I love stuff like this. You know, I love stuff that uses folklore and stuff like that uh, for the movie. Uh, you know, like the witch hereditary, as I've said before. So I, I did like these story concepts of like using changelings which I, I haven't, I don't really know what that, I didn't know what that was until I saw this movie, really. Uh, so that was pretty cool. But I bet a lot of people do know what they are, and so they'll watch this movie, and they'll be like, oh, that that's happening, and oh, that's that's why, that's why. You know, it, it's really not that intricate or complex. Not that a movie needs to be complex to be good, but this movie was just very uneventful. It had the pacing. It was almost even even slower than Rosemary's Baby. And so the pacing kind of killed it because these creepy moments were happening, but then you'd get these grace periods where nothing was happening, and so it really wasn't that intense or thrilling to me. It did leave you with an uneasy feeling through a lot of the movie, it kind of gave me a stomach ache a little bit actually just watching it and you know movies that give people stomach aches for some reason those are considered like the best movies like psycho gives me a horrible stomach ache watching uh the shining too and you know a lot of these movies the a, a sign of a good horror movie is if they give you a stomach ache i i've learned that over the years and this movie did give me a little bit of a stomach ache. So if you're in the mood for an Irish horror film, a light horror film, I would recommend it. Uh, it it's just, it's okay. And so you have to go into it knowing it's just going to be okay. And it's not going to be like the greatest thing ever. You know, it's not going to be the next Halloween, the next Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's just okay. So please like this video, comment, tell me what you thought of You Are Not My Mother! And then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more movie reviews. Goodbye everybody, see you soon.